Okay, we need to find the maximum area of the rectangle. So let's pause right here and read again. We need the maximum area. Final answer will be area of the rectangle that can be enclosed between the x-axis and the graph of that. So in every one of these, we're gonna have two equations. One thing we know and one thing we don't. The thing I don't know is the area. And the thing I do know is, oh, what do I know? <laughs> well, this is kind of lame, but this is what I know. It's not surface area, it's not volume, it's, not, it's just some other random equation. There you go, good to know. Well, I'm gonna draw that because I wanna give you a visual for it and you'll kind of know where this is going. So here we go, x-axis and the y-axis. Of course, I said that as I was drawing the opposite of what I was saying, but anyway. Parabola, upside down, shifted up 20, so let's use a purple pen, no reason. There's that, there's that. And that's what this parabola looks like. And we want to have a rectangle that's enclosed between the x-axis and that graph, which is not gonna happen down here. It's gonna happen up here. So we need a rectangle like this. There we go. That's it, there's our rectangle. Now, is this rectangle here or is it wider and shorter or is it skinnier and taller? Which one's gonna give us the maximum area? I don't know, I really don't know, but here's what I do know, that this is the height. Well, you know what, we're on a coordinate plane, let's call it Y. And this is the width, but you know, that's an X value. And let's be real honest, we got some symmetry going on here. This is also the same X value. Now we would go forward like five and then back five, so five and negative five. But in terms of distance, this distance is x, this distance is x, okay? So just putting this in the context of a coordinate plane helps us figure out that we are truly dealing with the area, which would be 2xy. So 2x is times y. You could say it's x times y plus x times y, xy plus xy, it's gonna give you the same thing, 2xy. So the next step is to take what we know, plug it in. So A equals 2x times negative x squared plus 20, and A equals negative 2x cubed plus 40x. There we go. And we are still looking to find the area um, that can be enclosed there. So what we're going to do is take the derivative of that. Negative 6x squared plus 40. We're going to set that equal to 0. And so let's see x squared equals negative 40 over negative 6, so that'd be 20 thirds. So x equals I don't know why I'm saying that right now, but I am. It's fun. So 2.582. 2.582. There we go. We have an X value. They did not say confirm that you actually found the maximum or the minimum or whatever. Um, maximum in this case. So we're not going to go through that process like we have in the previous ones. But we actually haven't finished answering the question because they want to know the maximum area of that rectangle. And we have not yet done that. So let's keep moving. So the area of a rectangle is 2 times X times Y or 2 times X times negative X squared plus 20. And we're gonna plug this number in, and I'm not gonna save it as x. What I am gonna do, actually, is pull it up as my previous answer. Totally doable, you can do that. So two times my last answer, times negative answer. Oh, I'm not even telling you what I'm pressing, I'm sorry. See that right there? If you press second and then that button, the negative button, it pulls up the last answer. Just saying. Last answer, and then plus 20. Just make sure that's the one that you want, and that is the one I want, because that is x. So I will plug those in. So two times that times negative that squared plus 20, and it's gonna give me 68 and some change. So the area is 68.853 square units of whatever, and I'm not gonna put units because they didn't tell us what it is. It's in a coordinate plane. Okay, that problem is finished. However, I do want to clarify a little bit here because it's, I'm gonna go back to this. I've always had students that asked a lot of questions about where this really came from. So if you got it, you can stop the video here, but I'm gonna keep going. We drew the parabola, we drew a rectangle. We knew the rectangle was symmetric. So if I treat it like this rectangle and that rectangle, then I had X times Y 
but I really had two of them, okay? Just, just giving you alternative ways of thinking about it. Or you could say, this is 2x times y. Now, if you're saying, I wouldn't have thought of that, don't panic, it's okay. This is a learning process where you're beginning to notice the things that you could or could not do in these problems. So, I think that might be the best explanation I have. Let's move on to the next problem in the next video.